Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about AP Economics Exam Tips and Tricks. This is both for the AP Micro and AP Macro exams. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. It has practice sets, a practice exam, it has answer keys and explanations, as well as a formulas cheat sheet, a graphs cheat sheet, and exclusive online practice games. Let's get into the tips and tricks for the AP Econ exams. First of all, we need to talk about what you should expect on the test. The test has two sections, multiple choice and free response. As far as the multiple choice portion, that is going to be two thirds of your overall score. There are 60 questions to answer and 70 minutes to answer those questions. That averages out to a minute and 10 seconds per question. And that time can be a little tight, so make sure you keep track of your time as you go through the multiple choice questions. The multiple choice practice on reviewecon.com will help you keep that time as you practice. The second part of the exam is the free response portion. That is one third of your overall score. For the AP economics exams, there is no essay. These are free response questions, which means you just have to answer the question as it's asked. There are going to be three free response questions or FRQs on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. The first one is going to be a long question. And the second two are going to be short questions. You have 60 minutes to answer all three questions and you should spend about a half an hour on the first question and 15 minutes each on the second two. Time isn't usually as much of an issue for the free response questions, but make sure you keep track of the time because you won't get any more when your time is up. When it comes to scoring the exam, it's an out of 90 score. Your multiple choice score is out of 60 with each question being worth one point. And for the free response questions, you're going to have a total of 20 points. 10 points on the long question and five points each for the two short questions. The score on the FRQ is multiplied by 1.5 to give you an out of 90 score. And the approximate minimum percentages needed to get a passing score on the exam is a mid 50% for approximately a three, a high 60% for an approximate four on the exam. And if you want to earn a five on the AP micro or macroeconomics exams, you are going to need to score in the high 80%. Now these are just estimates of where you need to be. The actual cut scores vary by year and by exam difficulty. So it's possible your actual score could be higher or lower than these estimates. Next, when it comes to the exam, you need to be using blue or black ink when it comes to free response questions. And that's because the free response answers are going to be scanned in black and white. And so if you use a light colored pen, your response might not scan properly. And as a result, you could lose out on points that you deserve. And so you should use blue or black ink to make sure that your response is properly scanned and can be properly scored by the readers. Also for the exam, you get to and should use a four function calculator. You can't use a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator, but you can use a basic calculator to check your math. And you should, because when it comes to the math, you not only need to show your work, but you need to have a correct answer as well. So while the calculations shouldn't be overly difficult, you wanna double check them with your four function calculator. Next, we're gonna talk about some tips with the multiple choice section of the exam. First of all, when you read a question, if you're not sure exactly what the answer is, when in doubt, graph it out. Multiple choice questions that refer to a graph can often be made a lot easier if you sketch out a graph and see what happens. A rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve will lower the price level and increase real GDP. And you'll know that if you graph it out. Here's another example with a supply and demand graph. Graph it out and you will see that the price is definitely going to increase, but the equilibrium quantity is indeterminate. And if you're in doubt, graphing it out will help. Also, make sure you read the multiple choice questions very carefully. I know I often make mistakes on questions that have not or accept as part of the question, because then finding the correct answer will actually be a wrong answer. You will also see some questions that have caveats that can be ignored when answering a question. In micro, you might see something like assuming no externalities, or in macro, you might see a caveat that assumes an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. Now, of course, you should always read those caveats and look for curveballs that you didn't expect on the exam, but most of the time, standard analysis will apply. Now, remember to not leave a single answer blank. There is no penalty for answering questions incorrectly, and that means there is no penalty for guessing. So before you are done with your exam, make sure you have answered every single question. Now, when it comes to the free response questions, make sure you read the entire question before you start answering the question. When you do that, I suggest you circle the direction verbs to make sure that you understand what the question is asking you to do. Also circle those direction nouns. 
Again, so you know what the verbs are telling you to do. And marking up your exam like this and then going over those marks before you submit your answer will help you make sure that you've actually answered every part of the question. This is from the Macro 2023 exam, and here's another example from the Micro 2023 exam. And again, we're going to circle the direction verbs and underline the direction nouns. And then go over all of that one more time before you submit your work. When it comes to answering your free response questions, make sure that your entire answer is actually written on the answer page. If you write your answers on the sheet that has the question, those answers will not be scored. In fact, they won't even be looked at by the readers. So make sure you put the answers where the exam directs you to. When it comes to doing math on the AP Micro and AP Macro exams, make sure you clearly show your work. Use the numbers from the question to do the calculations and show the different steps you took to come up with your answer. Once you have your answer, make sure you circle or box that answer to make it clear to the readers what it is you intended your answer to be. When it comes to drawing graphs on the free response questions, make sure that you have your graphs large and clear with everything labeled. Label your axes, label your curves, label the equilibria, and any shifts as well. And of course, read the question carefully to make sure you use the labels that are indicated in the question. And also remember that points are within the graph, but price and quantity values are going to be found on the axis. So if a question asks you to label the equilibrium quantities, make sure you don't mark those within the graph. Those quantities are found on the x-axis, and that's where your labels should be found. When you draw out your graphs, your curves should be solid lines, not dashed. Dashes should be used to connect the points within the graph to the prices or quantities on the axis, but the curves themselves should be solid lines. When it comes to the assertion points on your free response questions, make sure you state your answer clearly and concisely, and don't explain if an explanation wasn't asked for. If the question says diminishing returns will begin on the hiring of which worker, don't explain why, just state which worker it is, in this case, the third worker. And if you're asked what happens to the balance on the capital and financial account based on a previous answer, just state what happens. In this case, it becomes a surplus. But don't explain, just state the assertion. But those explain points can be tricky. So if you are asked to explain, make sure you are again, clear and concise with your answer. Also make sure you avoid contradictions. Also avoid wishy-washy answers, you should be definitive. And be careful not to talk yourself out of a point. Explanations should be short, and to the point. When it comes to those explanation points, make sure you are saying why your correct answer is correct. That explanation should focus on mechanisms and a math or graph connection wherever possible. Also, if there are numbers given in the prompt, you should use numbers in your answer. So if you're asked to explain what happens to the real interest rate, your answer might be the interest rate increases because consumers will save less, which decreases the supply of loanable funds. This explanation focuses on the mechanism of consumers saving more, and there's a graph connection, which is the decrease of loanable funds, to explain why real interest rates increase. Or if you're asked to explain if a demand curve is elastic, inelastic, or unelastic, your answer might be the demand curve is price elastic in that range because the price elasticity of demand coefficient is negative two, which is an absolute value greater than one. This answer, again, focuses on the mechanism, and there is a math connection using numbers for this answer. Next, I've got a couple of quick tips specifically to the microeconomics exam. When it comes to shading areas on your graph, make sure you connect your demand and supply curves to the axis. Here we have the consumer surplus shaded after a shift of the supply curve, and that demand curve is connected to the axis to make sure we have a clear triangle of where that consumer surplus can be found. Also, when it comes to marginal analysis explanations on the micro exam, make sure you explain why the unit you chose for your answer is beneficial and why the next unit would not be beneficial. So an answer might be the firm will profit maximize at four units because the marginal cost of $8 is less than the marginal revenue of 10, but at five units, the marginal cost of $15 is greater than the marginal revenue of $10. I'm explaining why four units is best and why five units would not be beneficial at all. Finally, we're gonna talk about some macroeconomics exam specific tips. First of all, I've got a trick for helping you remember the labels to the different graphs. Here we have a question that calls for a loanable funds graph, and if you're not sure how to label it, you can probably find some clues in the question itself. This is a loanable funds market, and that means we're going to have the quantity of loanable funds on that x-axis. So whatever the market is, it's going to be the quantity of that market. 
And when it comes to the price axis, we can again find that in the question. We are showing the impact on the real interest rate, and that is the real interest rate that's gonna go up there on that y-axis. Here we have another example with a money market graph. This question calls for the graphing of the money market, so that means it is going to be the quantity of money down there on that x-axis. And in the question, it tells us to show the impact on the nominal interest rate, so that means it's going to be the nominal interest rate on that y-axis. And there you have it. Those are my tips and tricks for the AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. Did I miss anything? Is there some tip that your teacher has given you that I didn't cover here? If so, put it down in the comments so everybody else knows about it. And if you're ready to practice for your AP exam, head over to reviewecon.com where there's lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills you need to ace the AP exams. And if you still need more help after that, pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.